Good evening. Welcome to the Spirit Gathering Teleconference. Today is June 21st, 2022, and my name is Healer and Counselor Sally Atkarab. Our topic this evening is surrendering, trusting, and receiving the higher flows. We're so glad you've joined us. Our program this evening will include time for everyone to share on this topic and for a group meditation wherein we will come together in oneness and bring light and love to the practice of surrendering into the flow of higher energy. This evening, I will be using the terms God, Lord, and Universal Consciousness. If you use other words to describe the all that is, please make those substitutions for yourself. We are recording this call so that people who could not be here tonight can listen in. Please press either the phone's mute button or star six to mute your line. This will help keep the line quiet. During discussion time, you can repeat this to unmute. Tonight, we will meet as a conversation council. The way it works is you may speak at any time, only taking care to let the current speaker finish before you begin. And speakers, please be clear when you are finished. So, Let's take a moment now to get settled, to center ourselves, to let go of the events of this day, and begin to enter the deeper sacred space within ourselves. Now, let us imagine that we are joining together sacred heart to sacred heart with every other person on this call. And now, let us imagine that we are joining together in a circle with a light or a flame or fire at the center. Imagine a spoke of light coming from the center of the circle to your heart. And for each person on the call tonight or listening in after this evening, now we are connected sacred heart to sacred heart. Let us now set our intentions. We listen to one another with compassion and curiosity. We ask for what we need and offer what we can. We deepen our connection with one another and the divine. May this sharing serve us, our communities, and the planet, and so it is. Our program outline for this evening will follow this format. I will be sharing on this evening's topic, surrendering, trusting, and receiving the higher energy flows. Then we will open the forum for other people to share on this topic. Next, we will have a silent meditation to bring the energy of love and light to tonight's program as we focus our awareness on the topic of surrendering. You all will then have a second opportunity to share. And then we will move to closing.
As our spirit gathering invitation stated, one of my greatest challenges has been learning to surrender my willfulness and to trust in God to meet my needs. I have always had the choice to join the universal flow. Joining the realms of higher energy flow is also an intentional chance choice for me. But bringing awareness to my thoughts and behavior patterns has helped me identify my blockages. And I have also found that generating more love and self-acceptance shifts the energy and assists me in opening and receiving divine grace. One of the first blockages I identified was the actual word, surrender. Because of the way I was raised, I have always associated the word surrender with war, power struggles, being defeated, and giving up. Surrendering to a person, now losing, and surrendering in a situation meant failing. No wonder I resist surrendering. However, as I matured and became more self-reflective, I found myself in situations where it was clear that the struggles I was in were self-defeating, even pathological. As I began to develop my spiritual consciousness, I realized that I was raised to be very self-sufficient and rarely reached out to people, much less prayed or tried to create a conscious connection with the divine. However, having been raised a Christian, I was familiar with how Jesus spoke to his father, and that he also described following God's will rather than his own. Perhaps the ultimate example of this was when Jesus knew it was time to be arrested, tortured, and crucified. He left his disciples to pray, and upon his return, he was clear in his intent to bow to his father's will. In essence, he surrendered his will to serve the higher purpose of God's will. Implicit in this choice was the knowledge that human consciousness is limited, whereas universal consciousness is omnipotent. This supreme consciousness expresses and manifest perfect order. It is said that Jesus gave mankind the Lord's Prayer as the means to pray, and even in its simplicity, it covers all human needs. It also clearly states that the person praying acknowledges God's supreme authority. I will now read it along with the spiritual interpretation given by Mary Baker Eddy in her book, Science and Health with the Key to Scriptures. The Lord's Prayer with Spiritual Interpretation by Mary Baker Eddy. Our Father, which art in heaven, and interpreted as our Father, Mother, God, all harmonious. How late be thy name, interpreted as adorable one. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom is come. Thou art ever present. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Enable us to know, as in heaven, so on earth, God 
is omnipotent, supreme. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us grace for today. Feed the famished affections. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And love is reflected in love. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And God leadeth us not into temptation, but deliver us from sin, disease, and death. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. For God is infinite, all power, all life, truth, love, over all and all. Jesus expressed his complete trust in his Father. His trust was so strong, he raised people from the dead and walked on water. In the book of Matthew, verse 17, 20, quote, And he said to them, For truly I say to you, if you have faith, the size of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible to you. And in the book of Luke, verse seventeen six, quote, so the Lord said, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you can say this to this mulberry tree. Be pulled up by the roots and be planted in the sea, and it would obey you. And the reason that Jesus used the image of a mustard seed in these sayings is because it was such an infinitesimally small seed. And he wanted to stress the point that we really need very little faith in order to do great things because the power of God is so strong. However, I lack that trust. In addition to being self-sufficient, I'm the kind of person that wants to know outcome. Give me certainty then I feel safe and secure. Moving into an unknown future feels scary. So letting go and trusting that the all that is will be caring for me and my needs is hard. I resist with the saying that God helps those who help themselves. It has been a challenge for me to create even a mustard seed, small amount of faith. Over time, studying with Amy Skeezus in Athabaskar and then the Tazadi community, I learned to invoke the light and to choose to receive the light. I also became more conscious of the contact I shared with the divine in my life. As I became more fully present in life, spending less time in my thoughts, my spiritual life began to blossom. As Russell Paul describes it, as we gaze through the third eye, we come to see the divine looking back at us. And so we are actively observing each other. So now I would like to open the circle so that we can hear other people's thoughts on the subject of surrendering and opening to receive the higher energy flows. 
then we can reflect quietly and put the energies of light and love on this subject. Please remember to unmute your line before talking and let us know when you are complete. I'm complete. This is Veronica. Um, This is the very subject that has been on my mind for the last month. Surrender. In symmetry with you, I also feel coming from a true space of lack of trust that surrender is a position of opening to be wounded. And I have been working with this, and I do find that in my healing practice, it is only possible by surrendering to the higher energy that allows it to flow through me to my client. And as it's flowing through me to my client, I am being healed at the same time. But in my healing and surrendering, new questions come up, new concerns, issues that I hadn't thought about, or I refer to it as going deeper. And each level that I get to, as I'm clearing it, there's another level under it. Surrender is simple. It's just not easy. And to trust in the Lord, trust in the Lord, repeats throughout the New Testament, trust in the Lord. I am grateful for this subject tonight and observing observing a gratitude in sharing a space with someone and a group of lovely, lovely people all searching to raise consciousness. I am complete. Thank you. Hi, Sally. This is Diane. Thank you for your reading and for your sharing. Um, I put the word flow as my intention for this year at the beginning of the year in January. And um, that has the allowing and surrender um, for me. Um, Surrendering goes with that to be in the flow. And um, I am just, I'm just finding that it's been kind of an interesting year with um, setting that as my intention for the year. And uh, what that means is that I'm letting go of many things um, that 
and structures that have been part of my life and listening for the flow and um, and more easily joining it. And as always in my experience, there's surprises that come with that mystery of it, that surrender to the flow, to the bigger, to the bigger thing. And I'm just feeling really grateful. And it's created for me a whole lot of spaciousness as I keep listening and keep, um, and just keep being in greater and greater flow. The gifts uh, seem to multiply exponentially. So I'm complete and putting down the stick. Thank you. This is Sally. Um, Something that comes up for me in listening to others, particularly what Diane just said, is that surrendering in this context of really becoming one with a higher energy is so completely different than surrendering to an enemy. And the the idea of listening for that flow listening almost for the beckoning of coming to join is a really beautiful image for me. So I just wanted to verbalize it myself, and I'm complete. Thomas here. Can you hear me, Sally? Yep. Okay. Way back in 2004 or five or so, I was doing the teacher training program for one of Amy Skies' training programs called physical atomic cellular revolution. And one of the challenges of doing that was offering a little class to other persons and charging money for it. And I found that in Super Bowl. But then to my rescue came Sally, and she volunteered the use of her living room and even kind of managed to recruit a couple persons to help me do this. And the... uh, kind of a technical challenge of of that particular part of the teacher training program was to offer a class that had something to do with evolution. And I picked as my subject matter for doing that mode of evolution is the Bhagavad Gita and the Upanishads from the Hindu spiritual tradition. And, you know, looking back on it, From this perspective in time, it's my considered opinion that that intensive study that I had to do to do those six little courses with uh, those hardy souls really was a real kind of bellwether change kind of place for me and my own personal understanding of... you know, the technical stuff of the of the Bhagavad Gita and the Upanishads, but also coming to find what amounted to the the my core understanding of of reality. <clears throat> and it comes down to this one tiny little wee phrase that comes out of the one of the Upanishads that all of this is Brahman. In this context, Brahman means spirit or the divine, a a sense of the um, (coughs) 
Well, anyhow, the experience of of the difference in the contrast is, you know, kind of before this, I was thinking of, like myself, as a person who's living here on planet Earth who has <clears throat> all this free will kind of stuff and choice to do this, choice to do that. And, and somehow or other, I'm kind of still in the betwixt and between stage of... Of something that's kind of radically different. It's rather much like that there is an ocean, and I'm a little fishy that lives in it, and who and what I am, all of it comes out of that ocean, and all that comes back into the ocean. That I live in that ocean, and in some sense, I am not different in kind from the ocean of spirit and you know in some sense from this perspective you know the question of well how can a a bubble surrender to the ocean when it is in fact not different than the ocean i still have my differences and difficulties even from one moment to the next of understanding or experiencing the divine that exists <clears throat> that that I swim in that I my being is not different from it's a, not different in kind maybe a little different in size but you know it's just so anyhow whenever I finally figure out all that I'll send you a postcard and let you know how it's like what it's like to be that undifferentiated bubble in the ocean <laughs> So anyhow, I'm complete. Thank you. And this is Diane. I hope it says, wish you were here. (laughs) (laughs) Well, for. (laughs) This is Veronica. I second the statement of Diane. (laughs) All right, now I would like to open the circle to unite our energy and expand our experience of being in flow and alignment with the greater oneness. We will take about 10 minutes or so to focus our attention on surrendering our will to God's will. Then we will reject the belief that we have to control, manipulate, and conquer the situation. We are able to perceive that everything is in divine order, for spirit is always present and in control. Ultimately, an outcome that will be to the greatest benefit for all, will be revealed. We need only speak the truth and respond to what is called for. No matter what form the outcome takes, it will be good. To begin, we will take a few minutes to silently explore and reflect on the thoughts and feelings that do not serve us. As you identify them, let them go. Take the energy of these obstacles and visually plant them at the base of your favorite tree or pour them into a large body of water. As you continue with this process, you will move on to a different level of consciousness. Allow yourself to receive the love and light that is there for you. Now silently repeat after me as I evoke the fourfold invocation so that we can shift our focus and feel into divine order, the flow and alignment that is always present. It may take a few minutes to reach the silence, the expansive state, and the higher flows of energy. That is fine. Continue to perceive that all is in divine order and release 
the fear-based possibilities that depict a lesser outcome. I will call us back when it is time to complete this segment. So let's first connect with yourself. That point of inner balance, the place you know of as home. Connect to with the physical core of the earth. And now connect with the trio of angels or guides, teachers, you may think of them as, that are always with you and around you. And from that space, repeat silently after me. I call forth divine love and light. I open to divine love and light. I receive divine love and light. I am divine love and light here and now.
Let us now start to come back. To bring that that serves us. To let go of that that does not. And we'll take a few minutes for people to share anything about the energy meditation that we just did. And I will open the floor. And I also realize that it may take a few minutes for people to be completely back and ready to share. So the circle is now open for sharing. Thank you, Sally. This is Diane. That was just really beautiful. It was so deep and smooth and huge in my experience and such a nice connection with the hearts of everyone on this call. And beyond. It was just beautiful. Thank you so much. I'm complete. This is Veronica. Thank you, Sally. Thank you so much for the preparation concern and holding space for this wonderful meditation. I come from a tradition of basically stepping into prayer and stepping out to make certain that our souls were 
not encumbered by any negative entity or energy that was not of our own in the God space. But tonight, we've done a similar meditation before, but tonight I truly was open with all of the work that I have been doing for this last year and a half to understand I am in control of the space within me as I surrender to it and thy control is in the surrendering and that it is good and it is correct to be one with the entity of God, of light of God, love of God, and power of God, and to have it within is a just position. If we stand in the energy, we must become the energy. And surrender is allowing the becoming rather than controlling whether we can partake or not. Thank you so much. Thank all of you for being here and sharing in this energy enough for me to have this revelation. I am complete. This is Sally. I just wanted to share that, like other people, I very much felt the connection of energy and expansion. And um, it was very interesting because when I opened tonight's program, my dog Kobe came up on the sofa and snuggled very close. And he was clearly participating in this. And then he got to a point and was like, I'm complete. And I looked at the clock and I was like, you're right, Kobe. That is stay on time here. So I just wanted to acknowledge him as another participant and to acknowledge the real beauty of the energy that was generated tonight. So thank you all for participating, and I am complete. So I think we've arrived at the time for our checking out, and I would like to invite each person on the call to comment on what is present for him or her before we move to our closing. So you can say what stays in the heart and mind as you leave the call. And for me, the word that comes up is radiance, just a beautiful, radiant, heartfelt energy that I experience. This is Diane, Uh, deep peace. Thank you. Tom is here. My word for the moment is gratitude. Thank you. I'm complete. This is Veronica. And my word is, I have no word at this time. I am complete.
Ying, did you have a word that... I'm, yeah, I'm here. Uh, this is Ying. Uh, the word I have is peace mm-hmm. in the heart. Incomplete. So thank you all for joining us for the Spirit Gathering Teleconference. The call may be archived as an MP3 at www.tazadi.org. Phone access to the recording of this call is available until next month's call. For playback of the recording, dial 667-770-1523, access code 990-322-POUND-SIGN. We hope you'll join us for our next Spirit Gathering on Tuesday, July 19th, 2022. These calls are hosted by Tazadi, an inner spiritual metaphysical organization founded in California in 1964. Tazadi welcomes, nurtures, and supports people in celebrating and more directly experiencing their relationship with the loving presence of the divine. Our programs are open to people of any race, color, or national or ethnic origin. Visit www.tazadi.org to learn more. We will now close with thanks and a blessing. Thanks to Zadi founders Amy Keyes and Dorothy Blackmere. Thanks to all of you who have been part of our community tonight. And thanks to the divine who supports us always, even when we are not aware of it. And now we will close with a blessing. Thomas, will you do us the honors? May the divine bless you and keep you. May the divine make its face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the divine uplift its countenance within you and give you peace. So mote it be. I wish everyone a good night. And again, thank you so much for joining us. And thank you, Sally. And just a quick correction, there's never been a spirit gathering in July or August. So the next spirit gathering will actually be the 20th of September. However, the being together and principal calls will be held in June and July. Uh, July and August, I mean. August. Okay. Well, I'm so glad you were here to make that (laughs) correction. All right. But express bus, no less. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Thank you, Sally. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Sally. Thank you, Tom. Have a great night. Thank you, Diane. Good Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.